it goes. So first class boys, juice 101. We're gonna be talking about uh some cool stuff. Um, some cool. Uh, this is a, a core part of a certain uh, Path of Exile uh, community. Um, this will all be on the test, by the way. So hope you guys are taking notes. There will be possibly pop quizzes uh in the future, and we'll be having a class every Friday coming on. So uh, once you guys are ready, you know. We shall begin. So we'll be starting in a moment here. So I've got a short table of contents here. I won't go over this too much since uh, I don't want to spoil the fun, right? So this is, this is, you got a bit, you got your rare monster, your beyond, your sex, your prophecies. You know, we won't spoil all this yet. You got some terms, some definitions coming up. So make sure you guys write these down. Um, also, the PowerPoint will be posted online for you guys to access later on. All right. So first question, boys. What is juice? What does it mean to juice? Anyone? Anyone have any ideas? Inspired learnings? Yeah, that's kind of close. Roids. Headhunter. Sweeten the deal. The liquid get from fruits. It's all right. There's some good guesses here. So, you know, what types of juice are there? You know, is it orange juice? You know, is that what I'm talking about? Is that am I doing a whole PowerPoint for 30 minutes on orange juice? Is Crip coming back? Maybe. You know, maybe. Um, are we talking about like materials and resources, right? Or am I talking about sextants, prophecies, you know, Edziri fragments, like chisels, chaos, like the juice. You want to juice your map, right? Like, is, am I talking about that type of stuff? Possibly. Um, but that's not uh, the, my main focus today. My main focus today uh, for our first lesson, Juice 101, is about speed, violence, power, and momentum, you know? This is the juice we're talking about today. The juice where you're like, you really just start blasting off. So uh, this is today's topic. So before we begin, I'm going to show this example. I'm going to watch this example twice, actually. We are going to watch this example twice. Let's see, can you guys see this? You guys can see this. Nice. It's full screen. Maximize this. So essentially, this is what we are going to be exploring today. You know, got a character entering the map, you know, kind of not so strong at the start, you know, HP is kind of low, all that stuff. Um, but then as the map goes on, right, our character gets faster, our character gets stronger, our character gets better, more violent, the momentum increases, you know, our veins start popping, our eyes start glowing red, and we just start like zooming, you know. Uh, yo, thanks for the sub, by the way, dude, that's a legacy sub. Yeah, so uh, this is kind of what we're talking about, boys, you know. The, the character goes from zero to hero each map. This is uh, this is what we're talking about, you know, that type of ramp up. And uh, this is on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. At your on your own time, so yeah, this is a short sneak peek. We will continue this this example later on. So <laughs> less hundred thousand ES, yeah, this is a it's an important part of juicing. Your ES total, it's actually coming up. All right, so power and momentum. How do we increase our power and momentum? Well, there are a couple ways, right? Um, we're gonna keep this in pretty simple pretty broad categories here so you know easy you get more damage right you know you get more damage you're more profitable you kill stuff faster right you're safer etc you get more speed right you move faster you know you obviously have more momentum you know basic stuff here right you know this is one-on-one -on -one, so we're going to keep this very broad and later on we'll have some advanced classes on these topics right and finally more defense now you have more defense it means you can play more aggressive and if you're playing more aggressive, it means you're going faster. And if you have the ability to play aggressive, maybe you actually have good damage then, right? Because uh, if you don't have good damage, then you can't really play aggressive as well. So these are the three things. So question for chat, how can we, can we create a strategy that combines all these three or gets all three of these tactics in? Is there a way we can, um, you know, get more damage, get more speed, get more defense of the certain strategy, right? So a lot of you guys are already guessing. Some of our, uh, you know, fourth year students or fifth year students are uh, are guessing it already. Um, if you guys don't know, you know, there, there's this uh, really cool belt in the game. It's called Headhunter, right? It's pretty cool. You know, a lot of people got it. It's uh, it's pretty badass for your build. Uh, <laughs> you guys guessed it, right? So this is one of the key strategies that we'll all be talking about in this video and how to uh, increase your defense, increase your speed, and increase your 
power, your strength, your damage, you know? And then、uh, its sister or its cousin, whatever you want to relate the two, we have inspired learning. And we're going to talk about some cool relationships between these two later on.、Um, we actually have some graphs, actually. So that's going to be pretty exciting stuff. So. Those with keen eyes with keen eyes, will notice something similar between these two items.、Uh, what is it? Well, I highlighted it for you guys if you couldn't see. So, when you kill a rare monster, keyword a rare monster, you gain one of its modifiers for 20 seconds. So, this is going to be the, the gist of、uh, today's topic today. We, it's all about killing rare monsters and getting rare monsters in our maps. So, How do we increase the number of rare monsters in our maps? Well, there's a couple things here, right? Couple. Why not magic monsters? Well, I can show you. Because it doesn't say when you kill a magic monster, you can gain its modifiers for 20 seconds. It's when you kill a rare monster. So, unfortunately, magic monsters、uh, aren't the main thing here. But, however, however, they're not bad, right? Because I'll be talking about another mechanic later on. Called Beyond, and、uh, we'll explore that one later.、Uh, for those of you that don't know, don't spoil it for chat, but、uh, we'll be talking about that one, guys. It's gonna it's gonna be really cool. So, even if the monsters aren't rare, it's still pretty good to get other types of monsters. So, that answers the question how do we get more rare monsters in our map? Well, let's start with some basics here. You know, we got our sextants, we got prophecies, We got influence, right? You know, you get your elder influence, your shape influence, right? The main things here, you want to add monsters to the map. You want to increase density in the map. Th this is our goal, right? You know, this is, our, this is our main goal here. What's next? You know, how else can we increase the number of rare monsters in the map? You can roll the map better. You can use Xanamods. There's a, so many Xanamods available. You got your Beyond, you got your Harbinger, you got your Nemesis. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff here, right? Really cool stuff. Then finally, you have League Mods, right? Usually,、um, this isn't too big of a factor, right? But、uh, hey, we got a flashback coming up, boys. And、uh, for those of you who haven't played Flashback, Flashback can be insane. You could have like Xana Mods that are implicitly in the zone. It can get real nutty real quick. So we'll be exploring that later on. So something to、uh, keep in mind for、uh, future classes. And obviously, Um, the big surprise, well, not even a surprise, it's kind of obvious Beyond, boys. Beyond is, you know, it's one of the core mechanics of this class today、um, and is the biggest source of rare monsters. You know, there's a reason there's an exclamation mark there. It's like, it's insane, right? It's how you, your character goes from like 2K HP to like 7,000, 10,000 HP and like 300,000 energy shield, you know, 2 billion damage and like 7,000% move speed. That's how you do it. You got to use Beyond and you got to combine it with the other mechanics. So let's go on. What is Beyond? Does anyone know? Well, let's find out. Let's find out what is Beyond. Beyond is a league mechanic where monsters killed in close proximity they spawn portals.、Uh, what do these portals do when. There are enough portals in a close enough location, they spawn beyond monsters. And there are some pretty cool things about these beyond monsters.、Uh, for example, every single beyond monster is either magic, rare, or unique. Hey, there's that rare mob term again, right? We want rare mobs. So if we get a lot of beyond spawns, get a lot of rare mobs, aka we steal a lot of buffs, aka we get a lot of power, aka we just start popping off, dude. You know,、uh, you, it's starting to come together now. The gears are turning. We're trying to figure it out, right? So, how can we get beyond? Well, you can roll it on the map, you can、uh, possibly use a Xana mod, or you can get it as a League mod. There's a couple ways to get it. And as I just said, spawn monsters are only magic, rare, or unique. Unique bosses are kind of rare, but、uh, they're very strong.、Um, they do give a bit of XP and some cool loot. Calm down. Why would I calm down? This is a very exciting class. If, you're, if you don't want to sign up for this class, Zuler, you can、uh, just leave this class right now. Please no,、uh, you know, I'm going to need you to settle down and be quiet, okay?、Uh, back to the lesson, guys. Don't distract. All right. You know, yeah, some other students, they paid a lot for this class, okay? So、uh, don't interrupt their learning experience. Put your phones away, please, and thank you. All right, coming up next, boys, we're going to talk about maximizing Beyond Spawn. So, a bit of a repeat here from earlier. How do you maximize Beyond Spawn? So, sextants, prophecies, influence. You know, this is all about adding monsters 
to the map, you know, increasing density. I have a question. Well, feel free to post in chat if I feel it's relevant, I will answer now. Otherwise, we'll have a question answering session at the end of class. All right, so as I said, how do we maximize the beyond spawns? So we want to add monsters to the map. That's via sextants, prophecies, and influence, right? And I'll be having some specific examples for these later on. You know, how else do we maximize beyond uh, beyond spawns? You know, we do we roll. How do we roll our maps? Is there a specific method to rolling our maps, guys? You know, do we want like high pack size? Do we want C, which is is there like a mod? You know, are we going for like beyond mods, right? Is there any Xana mods you want to use? Maybe we always want to use the beyond mod. Maybe you want to use Harbinger or something, right? You know, that's something to look at. And you know, are we playing a flashback league? Does the league mod interact with our beyond, right? Um, ideally, it does. So that's something to look at in the future. And furthermore. We want to run a naturally dense map. This is uh, pretty important, right? And uh, I'll explore um, some key reasons why the map uh, pick is very important later on. All right, coming up next. Well, let's just start off with sextants, actually. Sextants. So we only want to use sextants that increase density, aka additional mobs in the map. So. Here are a couple examples I took a quick screenshot in game. You know, areas contains 30 additional clusters of mysterious spirals. You know, players can take reflected damage. Um, see, these both add monsters to the map. This first one can be a. Uh, we're gonna have a. We're gonna have an advanced class later on. Uh, later on about this uh, first one here. Leave my, my uh, colleague Professor Cute Dog. He's actually doing some uh, data collection, some research on this. You know, seeing how good this uh, specific sextant is. So we'll have a sextant class later on. We'll talk all about sextants. It's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty hype. Um, so there, there's a lot of cool mods here, right? They add. So the key word you just see area contains additional monsters. You know, additional packs with mirror monsters. Area contains additional clusters of mysterious bar mysterious barrels, right? So these sometimes have monsters in them as well. So this is kind of the main thing you're looking for. You're gonna see a common trend here, guys. It's stuff that adds monsters into the map. Coming up next. You know, more sex and stuff. So how many sextants can you have on the on on your map now, right? So you want your sextant to add mobs. How many do you have? You can know, you can have five. It's right there. So how do you get five? We well, have to complete all the bonus objectives for white maps, yellow maps, red maps, and you gotta kill Xana's quest line. AK, you gotta kill Uber Elder. So you're either buying a boss kill or make it a, a really beefy boss kill. So that's, something to, that's something to consider. And I will have an advanced class on this topic later on on how we can achieve this. Um, also, I bet you someone has a question right now. Hey, Mr. Professor Havoc, you know, if I complete all the red maps, that means I have guardian maps completed. I'm gonna drop guardian maps. What do I do? How do I sustain my elder map? Well, this is again an advanced topic for later on. Later on, if you want a sneak peek, you can follow uh, the demonstration after class today, or you can feel free to also check out a uh, Professor Cute Dog stream for uh, his strategy on how he solves this issue. All right, coming up next. So again, today we're just all about the bare bones, all about the basics, guys. We'll be going into way more in depth and advanced topics later on uh, in future weeks and future classes. So again, common theme here, only use prophecies, prophecies that increase density, AK additional mobs. So we got the two main ones, Plague of Rats, Plague of Frogs, right? Um, it's kind of like a sextant, they have percent chance to spawn, they don't always spawn, unfortunately. Um, They're kind of tedious to get, but if you got them, it is worth it. So key thing for Plague of Rats, they can only spawn in indoor maps, and Plague of Frogs, they can only spawn in outdoor maps. So uh, as they say, you know, indoor, out there, if you can't remember, it literally says it on it. Um, so really cool to keep in mind. A common strategy that I can add onto this is a lot of people, they will either, let's say they're only one farming T16s, right? They'll, let's say, maybe do a T16 underground sea and they go like, hey, I got a lot of frog prophecy saved up now, but I can't prop my frogs in my underground sea, right? So maybe they switch the elder map to like a barrows or, you know, city square, an outdoor map to get used to the frogs, right? So that's a one strategy you can do, or you can do a uh, kind of a flip-flop strategy where you have like T15 and a T16, right? So a common strategy I ran this league was I ran my indoor map, tier 16 underground C, we popped our rats along with some other prophecies. And then for the other map, the outdoor map for tier 15, we ran shaped dwarf. So this is a cool strategy how you can you know, eke out a lot of XP and uh, balance your uh, prophecy consumption rate without always changing your atlas setup. 
So coming up next, how else do we add mobs? You know, we have our elder and shaper influence. You know, here's a quick picture, by the way. So we got our elder blob right here. We got some shaper, we got shaper strongholds. You know, even got like some elder guardian spawn and elder himself, you know. So again, this will be an advanced class for later on. But those of you that are keen can do their own research in the meantime. So elder influence. Uh, to my knowledge, if someone feel free to double check me, there's a two thirds chance to increase the density. You have uh, portals, which is godlike. It's absolutely insane. First of all, for map drops too, and uh, it, it's just nutty. You want portals on your map, dude? It, it's just like it's gonna make you feel really good inside. And number two, we got the squids. The squids are also really good. So elder is generally, um. Consider the stronger mechanic between Shaper and Elder Influence. Shaper Influence is usually not so great, whereas the Elder Influence um, has a high chance of being something that increases density, increases item drops, increases currency. It's just, it's just overall good stuff for you. And, um, you know, you kill these guys, they spawn portals. You know, again, it's all about adding mobs in the map for more portals spawning. The more portals spawn, the more monsters spawn from beyond. Yeah, okay, we still have more buffs. You know, common theme here. So here's a picture of the, the Shaper stuff. These guys don't really spawn too often, and they don't really seem to be that great either. You know, they don't really seem to be that great. Uh, this is just from experience, though. Maybe this will be changed in the future. All right, so coming up next, we have map rolls. How do we roll our map? So we have a simple equation here. Very simple, guys, you know. Again, I'm just kind of repeating the same thing here, but I'm really trying to drill it into your guys' heads, right? So when, when the test time comes, you guys will remember this, you know. More pack size equals more mobs, equals more beyond, equals more power, more momentum, more speed, more violence, just more everything. More, more, more. You know, that's what it's all about. So, you know, I got some two example map rolls here. So, this is like the bare minimum. On the right, we got the bare minimum here. I'm um, not really looking too much at these mods right now in this example, but, you know, we got a 23 pack size, 81 quantity. This is like, you know, one to three alchemies or chaos rolls right this is like very easy to get not too expensive right and then on our left we have another simple example right you know c which is right so the pack size might be lower the quantity might be lower on this map but certain uh, modifiers scale really well with beyond you know c which is is one of the examples right and even though this map has less pack size than this map it might actually give more xp per hour even if they have the same spawns of mods because c which is are just really strong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Some of you guys are saying, L your flat monk W. Well, fortunately for us, you know, your name's not Zizrin, my name's not Zizrin, we can read. So if I go back a bit, you guys notice there's a special strategy here. All right, where's my sextant page? Let's open up the sextant page again. So you guys see this sextant, guys? Players cannot take reflected damage. So if you're a uh, you know, a professional gamer, right? An advanced gamer, you be like, when you're sextanting your map, you'd be like, yo, I got the reflect, players can't take reflected damage sextant. So you go to your stash tab and you pull out your like, three reflect maps and it's like, hey, I got three maps where I can run these now. I don't have to worry about dying. It's awesome, dude. It's just really great. So this is how you bypass it. Also, you can also play reflect immune characters. That is a strategy. So moving on, let's go back forward a bit to uh, where we were. All right, back to map rolls. You know, we got our equation, we got our two example maps here. You know, we figured out, hey, LD Reflect is not even a problem, dude. We got this. Let's check the mods reflecting our maps like a lot of time, though. Potentially, yeah, but the strategy here is you want to pre-roll bulk maps, right? So that is something we can talk about later on in a future class. Maybe I would talk about a bit after this class today. Um, is about how do you create a large map pool? So when you create a large map pool or try to provide some big advantages, like, such as you can mass roll maps and you can organize them by like LD Reflect, you can organize them by Beyond, you can organize them by Magic Mobs. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do when you have quantity, right? So that's something we'll talk about later on. So, and then also we have a juicer map. This map is like, you get this, like, oh man, you're gonna feel really good inside. Right? This is a juicer map, boys. So like, Let's say this line is not even here. It's already like 28 packs. You're already like pogging. But then you see beyond, you're just like, oh, you, you, you're you just like, you're going crazy, dude. You're actually going crazy, dude. Because there's a thing in the Path of Exile called double beyond, right? So as I said, this is all about beyond. This is how we get our rare monsters, right? Well, 
you know you get add these percentage chances together i'm not too sure what the other how, what this adds up to because it's not they're both it's not a straight up double i think it might be 25 percent or something but you basically get a lot of mobs a lot of xp a lot of power a lot of speed a lot of violence a lot of momentum it's just awesome it's a really fun experience i highly recommend everyone in path of exile experiences this at some point fff oh that's not good are we back up boys testing one two three saved saved we're back refresh all right we just had a hiccup boys class is still going that's not an excuse for you to leave it's still going boys looks like chas confirmed for me xanamod is 15 percent, so it's 28 percent total that's a really large difference to so go from 15 to 28 percent that's pretty good. Should I have all I want to just run with beyond? So maps like these, you don't want to vol. So volling is an advanced topic, but we'll discuss later on. So going back here, right? Let's say this Sea Witch mod line was replaced with beyond. That's also something you would keep, even though it was only 19 pack size. Because just double beyond is just so insane. All right, moving on. Again, keeping all bare bones right now. You know, we've got there's animals, as I said. So enemies close to there's 15% chance to attract mods from beyond. You know, it's 4C. And that's generally really worth it if your goal is XP per hour or, just, you know, it's all about getting big. It's all about getting the juice, you know. You want the juice, you run beyond. Um, and it can usually pay for itself too. So you might go like, man, 4C is kind of expensive. Can't really afford that. But you'll probably pick up 4 pure C, if not more, an equivalent from the map. So that's also something to consider here. All right. So last topic here. Or one more topic. It's not the last. I have a lot more topics, actually. What am I saying? It's going YouTube. Yes, it's going YouTube. So we have dense maps. It's really important to pick a dense map. So how do we pick a map? Well, I've got three things here for you to, for you to consider. I tried to keep every category down to three things to make it nice and simple. So maps are preferred if they have high natural mob count. A lot of people that have done these... Um, online you can google some spreadsheets for this type of stuff but uh, you know my personal preference here is underground sea it's like been the best map um, for a while uh, well, i wouldn't say the best map but it's been the preferred map for the while you know there are some other maps with like potentially higher uh, average uh, mob counts right so that's something to consider um, but uh, it's a nice layout and stuff like that so next point it's also how close do the monsters spawn together right this is very important because the closer monsters spawn together which means the closer portals are, which means, you know, more portal spawn and more monster spawn, aka more rare mobs, more beyond, more power, etc., etc. So it's also something to consider here, right? Very important that stuff is like really close, aka indoor maps, you know, like toxic sewers, waste pools, stuff like that. That also scales really well with beyond. You know, more juice. Exactly. You guys are teaching this whole class to me, man. I don't need to be here. You guys are the teachers. This is awesome, dude. I love it. Uh, lots of enthusiastic people in chat. This is awesome. And the last point, you know, we want something that scales well with other density modifiers, right? So what I mean, it's like all this stuff we talked about earlier, like sextons, prophecies, you know, pack size on the map, you know, stuff like that. So here's a good example here. We have a strand map, right? Um, it scales really well with sextons, right? You know, it goes from like 300 mobs to like 1,000, like 1,500 mobs, right, with sextons, right? But then there's the issue, right? We don't, it doesn't have check, check one on the checklist, right? It doesn't have the high natural mob count, aka we're missing a lot, right? So a map like Strand, even though it scales really well with density modifiers, it's not, it's probably not worth it because you can get a map with like all three of these most of the time. So that is something to consider moving on now uh we're gonna we got some graphs now boys we got some graphs now this, this is gonna be fun so and we're nearing the tail end of our lesson here um does anyone have any questions before i continue through this next section because uh, it's gonna get a bit advanced in a section uh, in a second here can i pee if you would like to can i go to the bathroom will there be a test there will be a test how can I kill mobs? So we can all talk about uh, these strategies, you know, aka I see someone asking, how do I get a head turn in the first place, dude? We can talk about this uh, later on. All right. So a lot of questions about it will be on the test. Everything will be on the test. It's going to be like a worth 90% uh, of your final mark. Um, so you got you got to know this stuff. This is like all the base. We're literally just talking about basics right now. Um, uh, later on, we'll be going to some really advanced courses here. So uh, make sure... Make sure you guys are paying attention, taking notes. All right. Oh, I don't want to skip that. Let's go back forward a bit. All right. So power versus time. Left column. We have power. 
you know, on this axis, we have time, right? So, you know, this is just, so this is assuming we have a character and all they have is Headhunter, right? We have our base power level. And then as the start of the map, we have a nice steep curve here. And, you know, you know, we go from like zero to hero, right? You know, you know what I mean? We go like kind of a bit of a hero. And then it's been like, you know, 10 or so seconds, right? We kind of went from like this to this. We gained a lot of power, right? And then we're kind of like starting to plateau. We're starting to reach our plateau here, right? Um... And now it's been like 20 seconds. It's been 20 seconds and we lose a bit of power because as, as you know, Headhunter buffs inspire learning buffs. They uh, have a 20 second duration, but there's a way around this. And I just, you wait, there's a way around it. Some of you guys might already know, but yeah, just hold on, hold on. So to uh, summarize just this starting section here, you start the map, like right when you enter, this is your base power level. You kill some rare mobs, you spawn some rare mobs, and you get and you go up in power level really quickly, really quickly. And then you kind of start to near the cap out, right? Because all this stuff is multiplied together and goes up really fast, right? But, but, you know, it does kind of like peak out at a certain point, right? So you go down a bit because your head after bus expired, but you keep on like getting faster and faster, right? You know, because now... Cause you're here right instead of here you got more juice and you just go up even faster right and you, know, you lose a bit more because you know your hunter boss fire expired again you go up even more then now you're done the map but you reached down the map 75 seconds not too shabby right not too bad you know you're just starting out you just got to enter you know it's pretty good you can do a 75 second map that's pretty badass especially if it's like a ugs like an underground sea so this is our starting example but now i'm going to introduce an advanced topic here we're going to talk about ramp this is a, a very important topic to consider when designing your builds because we have items called Inspire Learnings, if you guys remember that. So this graph is a little bit more complicated, but don't worry. I'm here. I'll hold your hands and I'll explain it to you guys, right? So we still have our same headhunter graph here, right? You know, we got our starting point. You know, we kind of go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, down, and we're done the map in like 75 seconds, right? But let's say, what if we add two Inspire Learnings, right? Well... You know, so by adding Inspire Learnings, you guys don't know what how do, how you use them. Um, each Inspire Learning requires four notables, right? So some notables are or some Inspire Learning spots are easy to get, such as in uh, Shadow. Um, it only requires four points, but some take like eight points. Some take twelve points. Some take sometimes you have to go across this tree and spend twenty points for Inspired if you're doing like a crazy like five Inspired build, for example. So essentially, when you add Inspire Learnings, you reduce your base power but you increase your maximum potential. Um, so I'll repeat that again. You reduce your base power, but increase your maximum potential and also the speed at which you can possibly acquire buffs later on. So uh, there's a couple of things here. So we got two inspired learnings compared to this one. We started lower. You know, we're looking at the red line here. You know, we're going up. So like after like 10 seconds, you probably still have not passed like a base headhunter build at this point. But you soon pass it a couple seconds later, right? Because you just like, it's like all multiplicative, right? Like everything's just multiplying. Like all the juice from the sextants, all the juice from the map and like the juice from the bus still all multiplies together, right? So even though you start at a lower point and you, you know, you will notice this line has a bigger slope than this line, right? It's kind of hard to see, but this is a, is a bigger slope. So it means you're getting your power faster. Um, then you continue to get your power faster, right? And then as you see, by the 25 second mark, you have even more power, right? Just because you steal more mods, right? You steal more stuff that makes you go fast, makes you have more damage, makes you have more ES. It's all, it's all about the juice, right? You just get more juice. This is why, <clears throat> so eventually, two inspired, lower starting power, but more potential power end game. So, however, your buffs expired again. Your buffs expired again. What happens? You'll notice this line is a, is a slightly larger negative slope here compared to the blue line. Well, because you've stolen more mods, you also lose more mods, right? It makes sense, right? So you lose a bit more mods, however, you're still you're still kind of ahead of the headhunter guy here. Like if you guys are too racing, you're kind of ahead of this guy right now. Uh, most likely in most scenarios, right? So, but then again, if you notice the next stage, right? So you just lost your buffs, but you will regain these buffs at a faster rate than the normal headhunter guy because, you know, you gain more buffs per rare mob you kill. So as you notice, this slope here is bigger than this slope because you're, you're gaining your power at a faster rate. Then again, then you're kind of near the end. You're kind of like plateauing a bit similar to how we kind of plateau like here in terms of our 
um, ramp acquisition rate or, or a power acquisition rate. It kind of it kind of plateaus eventually, depending on your setup, um, to a degree. Because there's a bit of RNG. It's obviously not this doesn't fit all scenarios, but on average, it's probably something like this. You know, then you're kind of going to plateau here, but it doesn't really matter. You're kind of done the map already. You kind of done the map already, right? So you know, you finish around this is like 55 some or something seconds, right? Um, this is not like exact, right? Maybe it takes you a bit longer. These are just examples. All right, so. Finally, the last example here in this uh, chart, Headhunter versus Inspired Learning. So what type of effect does, you know, having five Inspired Learnings, how does this compare to two Inspired Learnings or just Headhunter, right? Well, as I mentioned earlier, some Inspired Learnings, um, they cost a lot of points, right? You know, this Trickster one only, only, only costs like four points on average, whereas like sometimes if you're going for five, like you're going to spend like 20 points for Inspired, right? So as you see, your base power is way lower it's way lower than like just a headhunter guy, right? Because you're just like you're literally dropping damage nodes, you're dropping cast speed nodes, you're dropping um, just like all the good stuff, right? The stuff like your build, like let's say you have like 500k pub or something. Let's say that's your pub DPS. In pub, it's probably gonna say it's like it's 100k or like 200k or something on like a on a five inspired build. This is what happens, right? So you know you lost like a huge percentage of your damage, but look at the slope of this line. It is increasing at a faster rate than this line here um so you are since you are starting to hold behind it just take you a while to go past it but oh man do you fly past like do you fly past look at your point after 25 seconds if everything goes well if you gain enough momentum during this section you can end up way far ahead in the first 25 seconds here 20 25 seconds here and you're just like yo you're cruising you're feeling really good so yeah you got you just spin 20 seconds and now you're gonna lose some buffs However, you will kind of lose, um, similar to this line, uh, you know, we'll lose a bit more. However, it's not too bad. Since remember, this is power, it's not number of buffs. This is power, not number of buffs, right? Since you have so much power now, like your power is so large, the number of buffs you lose is uh, smaller. It's a smaller percentage wise, if that makes sense, right? It's kind of be, that's kind of a weird idea to grasp, but like, um, since you have so much power, the buffs you lose is a smaller percentage-wise, and you kind of guys can kind of see this in example when we rewatch later on. So it's not so bad. It's just why the the slope is kind of similar to this slope. It's not as bad as too inspired. And then you know, since you gain stuff, it's so fast, right? You are just blasting off, and you're done the map in like fifty seconds. Like you're just like you're just op. Your character is like at the pinnacle of gaming. Well, it's actually not the pinnacle. I I can even show you faster stuff than this. But uh, this is just uh, again the bare bones examples. Um, this is, again this is a kind of advanced topic. The whole ramping concept here. But the main idea is you sacrifice early character power for more power later on. Um, and if this takes time to sink in. It's okay. Feel free to like rewatch this section later on. All right moving on so it's kind of repeat here by more inspired learners we decrease space power increase max power and increase maximum momentum you know if when you want to get like maybe like the head enter max speed is like 800 percent move speed on average right but maybe with the five inspired you can get like 1600 percent move speed potentially right not all the time maybe we'll average out at 1200 or 1300 potentially but maybe it's like you get the right combination the right things multiply together you get 1600 percent move speed you're, you're going pretty fast your break is the speed limits right there it's pretty crazy so this is the, the summary on that section now one last topic for today this is the last topic extension how do we extend the duration of our buffs well some of you guys know this some of you guys are saying in chat earlier the guys that uh you know took this class like five years ago um why are you in this class by the way well you know it's good to have a refresher anyways number one solstice vigil solstice vigil so as you can see we can read this mod right here gain shaper's presence for 10 seconds when you kill a rare or unique enemy it essentially slows down time for yourself so it means your buffs last longer, your flasks last longer. Um, so our main topic is the power, right? The buffs that give you power, they last longer, which uh, you'll see in the graph following up. And then secondly, the other way you can do it is shackles of the wretched. You can self-curse yourself. See, curses in the design are reflected back to you, and you can put temporal chains on yourself. You know, this, again, comes to its own challenges and solutions, but again, it's something we can talk about in future videos when we're doing an advanced topic. So these are two methods to extend the duration of your buffs, of your power. All right, power versus time. Another really simple graph here, right? 
So head enter and head enter plus solstice. So you have the same curve. So I didn't put any inspires in there just to keep it really simple, right? I wanted to keep this really simple. So at the start, you know, you got the start of the map. You're gaining your power at a pretty fast rate, right? Because you're just going from like zero to hero, right? And then, you know, you're kind of trying to plateau out a bit. And you've reached like 20, 25 seconds and you're trying to lose some mods. No head enter, you lose the mods, right? Same as before. But with head enter and the solstice going... Your line keeps on extending, right? And now since you have more power, similar to the, the five inspired example earlier, the percentage drop, since you lose your you lose your uh, stacks, your buffs at a slower rate, plus it's a smaller percentage of your overall power, that you don't lose as much. Which means if you don't lose as much, means you have more power available, AFK, you're able to snowball more, right? So a, lot, a cool way to think about this is that it's like a snowball, right? Um... Think about like you're rolling a snowball actually. And then like as you're rolling the snowball, like you kind of lose some snow and some snow falls off every 20 seconds, right? Just think about it like that. Well, let's say the solstice vigil is a buff that makes your makes you lose slow at a snow at a slower rate when you're rolling your snowball, right? So that's an easy way to analogize this and kind of uh, think about it in a simpler way. Um, if uh, the graph is a bit confusing, right? So like every time you're rolling your snowball, you're trying to make a big snowman or something. Um you, you kind of lose some power along the way, right? So eventually, since you have more power, you know, you come stronger, you go faster, and you notice this slope is way higher than this slope, right? Because your stuff is lasting so long now. You go up here, then you lose some buffs again, and then just like, even higher, man. Like you just like, you're, look at this power level, guys. This is like over here. This is like, this is like 120, 130, and we got like, you know, 75, 80 here. You know, it, it's like simple changes just because it's all multiplicative in a way, right? They multiply with each other and you just go crazy high, right? So I'm sure you guys can imagine what like Headhunter, Solstice, Five Inspired look like, right? You'd probably start like over here and maybe even put you in the negatives. Your power is like so bad, right? But, yo, man, this end game, I don't even know if I could fit on the chart, right? I'd have to change my skill here. i will change my skill. Um, it, might, it might even like finish over here, right? It, it's pretty crazy. So, this is... Uh, Oh, before I get into questions here, this is essentially the, the gist of today's lesson, lesson, right? We're going to watch the example video again, just since now, since you guys understand some basics, maybe we can uh, pinpoint out some topics here, right? So, you know, let's see if we can, uh, we'll finish this map and then we'll uh, talk a bit, talk a bit. Ooh, Exalted, wow, stream RNG, dude, that's awesome. All right, we need this guy, this uh, guy to hurry up in this map. All right, going in a new map, right? All right, you know, see we have 4,000 ES. You know, got like 1,000 life, MOM. Got uh, got some buffs here, you know. Um, you know, look how fast to move. Like, we're going, this is pretty slow, right? Pretty slow character, you know. We're kind of just like, look how slow we attack, right? It's not so great, right? But uh, just hold on, right? See, our power is low right now. But, you know, it's kind of been like 10 seconds, starting to gain power really fast. And now look at our speed, you know, look at our HP, it's increased. We got some ES. We should be getting some ES soon enough if we get a mod going. You know, our HP has just gone up again. Our speed's gone up. Our attack speed's gone up. We got Shroud Walker. We can utilize Shroud Walker as Flicker Strike. Now we're playing a Flicker Strike bow build. This is an advanced topic that you can, uh, if you can master this, right? Not many people master this. A lot of people are scared of Shroud Walkers. Like, oh man, what if I go to bears? But nah, if you memorize the teleportation rate, you can use this as a clear speed buff to go even faster, right? It's like you have Enigma for those guys that play D2. You got Teleport on top of your main skill. It's really cool. It's really cool. You know, I got bears there, but I didn't worry because I knew the teleportation rate. I knew I could move out. And I wasn't too worried about that. So as you can see, you know, the character's going way faster later on. I'm attacking way faster later on. And I'm like, I'm attacking once in many cases and just blowing up whole packs my damage is so high right now so it's another big advantage of having a headhunter going you know if you have a nice like off screening build right you only need to attack a couple times sometimes you don't have to do spam so it's, it's really strong it's all about multi multiplying stuff together all right so uh, thank you for tuning in boys i hope everyone uh, boys and girls uh, enjoy the lesson today um, if anyone has any questions we can end here I hope uh, everyone uh, learned a bit about juice and uh, what juice means in terms of power and momentum and speed today. What's the topic for next class? That's uh, to be cited. You know, I have some questions for you guys, you know. Do you guys want more videos like this? Would you guys like more classes in the future? Is there any specific topics you want? So that's some of the questions I have for you guys. 
but yeah, I'm definitely available to answer some questions right now. Questions on the topic of this video. So this is will be uploaded to YouTube. So stuff that is relevant to people watching the video will be stuff I'm answering right now. Uh, other topics um, such as sustaining stuff like that, will be all be in its own video. Unnecessary is beyond Xanamod. It is, I'd say, highly uh, necessary. Very highly necessary. Played a league without it, and uh, it was very rough. So we can get a class night acquire headhunter too. How about volume maps? I'll be in a sustain slash map rolling video in class later on. Why can't you steal rare mods from beasts from Einar daily? Unfortunately, that is, a, you could argue it's a GG oversight. Uh, I believe we used to be able to, but they changed it. Um, oh, here's why. Because back in the day, um, when we, we, we could kill mobs ourselves, we threw nets and we killed mobs, right? But now Einar automatically nets mobs, right? And that's why we cannot uh, steal mods from rare boss because he nets them. How about map mods that hinder juicing up our sex mods? Yeah, this is all uh, really cool advanced topics. Right? Today we want to keep it really bare bones, right? Since uh, we have a lot of new players in Path of Exile that just recently joined. So I hope this was a pretty good refresher for you guys, the people that have been playing for a while. You know, kind of get the juices flowing, right? So we got the, the character juice, we got to look at the mind juice, right? Kind of get these gears flowing, right? Let's get them, get them oiled up. We can start thinking about these strategies. Ascend, we can ascend the community to the next level, right? So that's going to be pretty cool. We're going to juice up the community here, juice up our knowledge. That's going to be pretty exciting. So there's a lot of cool stuff we can uh, do later on. I run three inspired learnings in Hunter, but I find myself going too fast, getting stuck in ledges and maps like you. Yes, how I train myself to path better. So that's just practice, right? You know, you just got to get like better at going faster. Maybe you want to practice with just a headhunter. Then maybe you add one inspired. Maybe you add two inspired. Maybe you drop your queen. Maybe if you're going to queen in the forest, maybe you drop some move speed. Just like, you know. Get good at a certain pace and then maybe increase your moves by 10%, 20%, then go from there, right? It's like you can do the all or nothing approach where you just go like from like 300 to 600% move speed, right? Or you can just, you know, maybe slowly increase it out really quick. Why only five inspired learnings? That's just an example. You can get a six, six inspired learnings, you can get more. It's a unique shoulder, but temporal chains work. So shackles of the wretched and temporal chains. It is. I'd have to explore it for this patch, but in the patch, it was worth it. It is something to explore, though. So and again, there's downsides, right? Items or extension methods which require a lot of gear means you can't wear magic fine gear, and magic fine gear is uh, pretty important, right? Nowadays, especially because you know sustain and you need money, right? Maybe if you're not doing player quantity, you say you're playing solo. Magic is pretty nice to you know make you trade less, make you able to trade more aggressively. You know, this is another topic we can talk about trading aggressively, right? Saving yourself, buying yourself time. It's also something to think about. So uh, there's a lot of cool things we can talk about here. So uh, is it worth it? Yes or no? It depends on your wealth and it depends on a lot of things. Is it not to mission turns more spider learning that running out of good mods to get? Um, so there are not limited mods, right? Like let's say a rare mob has has, you know, like haste, quick, and like accurate, right? Like just three, uh, for example, right? I don't know if that's possible. Let's say it has those three. Um, you can steal the same mod multiple times. This is why inspire learning and hunter stacks, right? It's not just like, oh, you're out of mods. No, you stack that same quick mod literally four times, which is why more inspired is like really OP. If you just steal the same quick mod like a million times, it's, it's insane. Which is why sometimes, but there's also a downside, right? Sometimes, you know, you lose that same quick mod. There's one that you stacked up four times at the same time, you lose that all at the same time, like 30 seconds in the map. So you really got to utilize the, those uh, 30 seconds or 20 seconds that you've had that mod to, to get the maximum juice, maximum power. <laughs> Hello, teacher. Can you talk about using vol haste on supports? Well, I think it's uh, not bad. I know some supports um, have trouble keeping up with the carries when the carries are going really fast. It is uh, an option, but I feel like uh, build s questions. That could be a topic for its own video. 
yeah, that's an interesting topics. I know you have a lot to say about that, Snap. You know, he does the whole Vol Grace thing. A lot of people feel very strongly about Vol Grace. A lot of people very, feel very strongly about Vol Haste, Vol Disc, and other Vol skills. That's, that's something. Something to talk about. All right, so I think this is the, uh, the gist of questions today, Ray. You know, um, I hope everyone has a, a better understanding now of uh, you know, Juice and Path of Exile, guys. Um, I look forward to making more videos like this in the future. Let's go open our table of contents again. So these are the things we covered today. We covered uh, Power Momentum, you know, Rare Monsters Beyond, Sextants, Prophecies, Influence, Map Rolls, Animal League Mods, Dense Maps, Power Level Ramp Extension, and then you know, we had an example in Q&A. So we will uh doing more classes like these, ideally once a week. And then uh, if uh, people really like this, we can maybe increase the frequency. But we'll start out with once a week, go from there, and see what people really want to learn about. There's a lot of suggestions. See, like all, most of the questions are like, hey, I want to know about this extra stuff. So see, feel like, um, feel free to crack me, right? There's a lot of uh, advanced players, you know, um, in this chat, right? A lot, a lot of beginners, right? Um, I feel like uh, most people actually knew a lot of this, but uh, hope the refresher um, helped either way. So this is going to be the end for this video. It's not going up on the YouTube. YouTube guys, click that like and subscribe button. That's badass, dude. You're badass if you do that. Without further ado, I'll see you all later. Bye, guys. Bye.